Ding, 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 Welcome back to the Jenna Julian Podcast. That was a good high five. Thanks. No, 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 it was a dual effort. Thank you to me, too. Oh, thank you, thank you. We're in new chairs, guys. We're in chairs that are made for sitting in more than five minutes at a time. I keep, like, playing with it. I, I want to just play with my chair this whole time. Right. Like, like, for those of you that are listening and can't see, they're, like, gaming chairs. Yeah, but they we feel so online. comfortable. They're really comfortable. I think they're, like, ergonomically designed to fit your gaming body, which is... Gaming is an uncomfortable position, I feel like. So. Yeah, and the other chairs, I mean, they're easy on the eyes, but not so much on the back. Um, anyway... Welcome back to the Jenna Julian Podcast. This week's episode is brought to you by Headspace. Start meditating for free on the app. Go to headspace.com slash Jenna Julian to get on your way to a happier, stress-free lifestyle and do the Take 10 Challenge, 10 days free of meditating. It is also brought to you by Viceland, Vice's new TV channel with plenty of awesome new shows coming out this week. Uh, the channel actually launches today. Uh, so check that out. It is called Viceland. Uh, see if we can get the channel. I actually watched one of their new shows before it came out. Uh, so I can tell you guys about it. We'll talk about it later. It's called Ooh. Balls Deep and it's a Ooh. great show. And, uh, it, they do some of the most like entertaining pieces. So, uh, thank you to both of our sponsors, thank Viceland sponsors. and Headspace. Um, so we're in new chairs and I'm trying to like, frame it right because like the other chairs they stopped right here yeah so they weren't in the frame but now you have to factor it in to make sure it so all looks many okay factors so many factors if you have so many factors are you in, are you in a factory <laughs> julian's had it with me today i'm like super derpy you ever just have like a derp day where you just feel derpy all the time derpy day i feel derpy also literally right before i hit record john was like Actually, I am hungry because <laughs> I was like, are you going to eat before we podcast? He was like, no, I'm good. And then I sat in this chair and then I got hungry. That sounds a lot like something I would do, except it'd be a lot worse for everyone, a lot worse for everyone because I'm worse to be around when I'm hungry. So. Well, yeah, you're hangry when you're hungry. Like we, a lot of times I'm curious, <laughs> curious, I get a hungry fury. It's, yes. Yeah. It's fury. Fury. I got fury. Absolute fury. I unleash hell. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> like when we're traveling um, with Rome, Rome knows. Rome, Rome. knows now. Well, like at, she, at first, you know, she was like, is Julian all right? Like he seems really upset this morning. I'm like, yeah, no, he's just hungry. <laughs> he really is just hungry. That's it. She had a learning curve, but now it's like, it's like there's two Jenna's yeah, understanding now Rome will just Julian's be like, hunger right, level. First thing we got to do is go find some food at the airport. <laughs> and we don't mince so words hungry. anymore. Rome's not like, are you hungry? I'm like, oh no, I'm fine. It doesn't do that anymore. It's She's like, like Julian, you're hungry. I'm go like, eat something. I'm like, yeah, I'm let's hungry. Find let's let's get me some fucking food. It's like your fault you have all those muscle children to feed look at them they're turning into muscle teenagers too <laughs> they're growing up and they're just hungrier and hungrier they're they hungry so um today was a weird day we like woke up on it's a saturday we podcasted on saturday this week uh normally late. normally you do it thursday or friday this week we had to push it back but we woke up on a saturday and there's fights on like midday which Anderson is always weird silva and bisping we can talk about that you want to talk about that sure. right um so there's Anderson Silva fighting Bisping. Uh, I feel some type of way about that fight. First of all, Bisping won, and he should have won. So good call on the judges. Which Julian you don't feels very often. strongly about that for all of you Anderson Silva fans out there. Julian feels very strongly that Michael Bisping should have won. He did win. Yes, I know. Yeah, no, he <laughs> earned the win. It was uh, it was the most I've ever wanted both Bisping to win and Silva to lose. Mm. I, and I'm not I'm not a person who dislikes Michael Bisping. Mm. I've always liked Michael Bisping. A lot of people, I mean, he prides his whole kind of persona on being the the villain. And so many people have hated him for so long. But you, you like he's starting to become more liked because you have to respect him. He's like yeah. he's still relevant and he's still really good and he's. I actually met him in person, which was really cool. But he's a very likable guy if he's you like smart. look past his yeah. little, you know, his whole thing he puts on. Anyway, he fought a great fight. Uh, Herb Dean totally fucked the whole thing up. There was an incident where Michael's mouthpiece fell out and he pointed to it twice. And not and, only did and, he not stop the fight to get the mouthpiece back in his mouth, he he like verbally responded to Bisbing. So Bisbing looked at Herb Dean while Herb Dean was talking to him and then yeah. got kneed in the face. It was very dirty and Silva shouldn't have even done it. Uh, so I was pissed, but I was just glad that Bisbing won. Yeah. Don't worry. We're not going to talk about fights the whole podcast. 
<laughs> for the next six podcasts, we'll talk about this one fight. Oh, my God. It does not deserve that many podcasts. But, yeah, he, he deserved to win. And I feel like Anderson Silva is, you know, he, he looks like a different person now when he fights. He doesn't look even close to the same. Yeah. And and that was Michael Bisbing's lifelong dream to fight him. And he did. And he and got he very emotional. He Yeah. And he deserved to win because he was taking the fight seriously. And Anderson Silva was. Was and, not. He was Anderson silva a lot. But he was doing it in like a sloppy way too. He just, he didn't, I mean, nothing about him looked at all like the old one. Yeah. But I'm, I couldn't be happier for Bisbing. I just feel bad for Bisbing's face because Herb Dean owes him like the medical bills involved in him getting his I face know. split open by that um, nasty knee. It was a it was a dirty knee. Shouldn't have happened. It but was against Herb, the rules. Herb Dean should have been like he was so far away across the octagon when it was happening, and he was holding Bisbing's mouth guard in his hand. Yeah. So Bisbing had you know that was the second time, and he was like. Oh. Are you going to give me my mouthpiece back? And Herb Dean was standing across Talking the octagon. To him. He should have been right up next to them where jumping you're supposed in. to be. He, that's what refs do. Right. They, if they have the mouth guard that they picked up yeah. mid-fight, they'll jump in and be like, right. put this back in. All right, fight. Yeah. Instead, he just held it and he was talking to Bisbing. Yeah. So Bisbing was distracted, Yeah, which is really weird to me. Well, you know, you never know what's going on with Herb Dean because it, that was relatively out of character for him as a referee. Yes and no. He's had a lot of really bad fuck-ups, but he's also sometimes a good ref. It's it's hard because in MMA, I really can't put my finger on one guy who's been perfect. Kim Winslow. I'm kidding. Oh, she's the best. <laughs> she's I'm the best. Kidding. She is a god I'm amongst kidding. men. <laughs> no, even like, you know, um, John McCarthy or Dan Mergliata or any any ref who's ever done a good job has also done a horrible job. It's That's true. just how it works. It's true. Especially in MMA. But um, that was just a little weird watching Anderson on a, on a free fight, At 3 fight pass in card. The it wasn't free. It was on fight pass. But. Still, in weird. the middle of the day, it was middle very of the day. Weird. Okay, I want to ask you a question because we have not talked about this yet. What are your thoughts on uh, Conor McGregor and Diaz? Okay, so my thoughts on the fight itself, if you just look at it as a matchup, I think it's a good fight. I personally think it's more interesting um, than a potential Dos Anjos versus McGregor fight simply because these guys are going to box right. and that's cooler to watch. You know, like they both have a lot of reach. They both have very skilled true, hands. Yes. Uh, Dos Anjos would have, un, you know, undoubtedly tried to take Connor down, put him on his back. Um, in terms of like this being the replacement fight, I don't think it could have been a, a better replacement. <laughs> like if you're thinking of who could have stepped up and pr- and promoted a fight. I'm always going to agree with that. Right? Like, <laughs> p- you know, people are like upset that the fight's next week because they want to have more buildup of right, trash yeah, talk. Yeah. <laughs> Like, that's how good of a replacement Nate Diaz is. I just feel like anytime someone has to drop out of a fight, if you could fill it in with a Diaz, regardless of gender or weight good. class, like, gender. it would just... <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. Jen but is it a, would just a proponent be so, of Diaz. Oh, I just love them. Because yeah. you know that I love outspoken people that are yeah. just... They do whatever they want, good or bad. And, you know, they've dealt with the consequences, good and bad, yeah. both of them. Yeah. I'm just... I'm stoked. I'm so excited. Because we literally have not talked talked about that i'm so excited yeah i can't I, we haven't talked about it it's it's happening this weekend march 5th super fight right march 5th but yeah. isn't uh holly Holm fighting yeah holly Holm's fighting we should take like casually on the fucking oh co-main event God. um and it was weird like dos Santos like broke his foot whatever that's legit dropped out and then he started fucking running his mouth on twitter like oh of course like you didn't want to fight donald cerrone like what? Dude, shut the fuck up <laughs> right now. You do not get to talk. You do not get to open your mouth at all towards mm-hmm. Conor McGregor. You dropped out of the fight. Mm. There's no place for you to eat. I mean, it's like, it was like the weirdest thing. That was so pretty, weird. That was pretty weird. Uh, do you have a prediction? No, okay. I don't. Yeah. I, I predict that I will be thoroughly entertained. I guess if you had to twist my arm, I would say that McGregor would probably win. Um, but I think... what. Oh, you're twisting it? Oh, no, give me a rope burn. <laughs> Indian yeah. burn? No. It's not, it's, it's a, a rope this burn. This is an Indian burn. You racist. I'm totally kidding. It's an Indian I'm burn. I'm so kidding. I'm sorry. That's not meant to be offensive. That's just a, ow, okay, ow, oh, wow. Uh, Do you see this burn on my forearm? Yeah, because she burned herself on the stove. I was cooking moussaka and I got born. Moussaka. Uh, my prediction, well, the last time D, uh, Nate Diaz got knocked out, was when he got kicked in the head by Josh Thompson, mm. and he never ever got got knocked out before that. 
I, I think Connor's going to finish him. Mm. Not with a submission. I think he's going to knock him out. TKO or knock out. Yeah. Mm. Connor's, I mean, he's too, uh, the, he's at the, the, the fucking peak of his game. Yeah. When you watch Nate Diaz and you're like, he goes up against Michael Johnson and you're still wondering, is he going to win <laughs> this fight? That's when you're like, okay, he's on a different level than Connor. Okay. Right one thing that I'm going to say though, because I'm a, I'm a Diaz fan, just regardless of anything forever, just as human beings, I'm a okay. fan of both of them. <clears throat> um, I think that they perform exceptionally well under pressure. So when they have all of the lights, all of the big, bright, everything happening, the crowd, they feed off of the energy of other people in there. Absolutely. Since this is going to be a massive fight with a lot of energy Mm -hmm. and a lot of people watching Mm -hmm. and cheering and screaming, and it just feeds into what he's about. You're you're right, I think that you will see... Although I do think that they always are in top condition, top form. They're always they're always really like the right there. Triathletes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're always in great shape. I think that you will see a, a really good fight from from Diaz because he's just like ready to go when people are yelling and screaming. I agree. The bigger, the higher the stakes, the better they fight. I agree. Like I, I, I don't think this is going to be an easy fight at all. Yeah, he McGregor. doesn't have much to lose though either. That's the loses. thing. All the pressure's on Connor. Right. And I don't think Connor's going to have an easy fight. But no. I do think once the first round's over, once all that energy kind of just simmers down, mm-hmm. Connor's going to dial himself in, and mm-hmm. he's going to really start to hurt him. I That's think, what I think. I, think I mean, Nate, all I just predict that I'm going to be wildly entertained, and that Nate's going to make me laugh. Well, because you know they're both going to be throwing the bird at each other, talking <laughs> during the fight. Like it's going to be a great oh, fight. Oh, take my money, Dana. Take it. Let me throw it at you. Take my money, like right now. Yeah. Okay, what's your prediction for Misha and Holly Holm? Because I'm I'm gonna predict that Misha is not gonna win that fight. Okay. But Misha's fucking she will put Mi- up a hell of a fight. The thing about Misha is she is the single toughest fighter. Fuck yeah. By far in the female division, but even I was like in by, the, one of the toughest in the UFC. Well, hold on, I was shot by uh, Paige. It, but she fights at 115. Fans right? yeah. Yeah, and uh, also Rose Nami Yunus. Uh, shot. Oh my god. Well, she beat her. My. god. God. Yeah, well, Thug Rose has always been like dope. She's just been, you know, young and finding her her stride. But when um, she when she peaks, I, everybody better be scared for. Well, their that's arms a different way. Uh, One fifteen. So well, you know, I'm just. But, but Misha Tate. Hmm? Okay, Misha Tate has been uh, <laughs> in the fight game for years. Oh my god! Forgive me, the uh, athlete. <laughs> that's the athlete Kohea. Um <laughs> So Misha's been in the fight game forever, yeah. but one, I mean, she's a talented, she's a well-rounded fighter. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? She can grapple, she can kickbox, she can, you know, wrestle, but there's one thing that separates her from so many people is her fucking toughness. Mm-hmm. Like she can take punch after punch. She can look like horrible after a fight. She's mm-hmm. taken so much damage, but kept going. So I think that if she can withstand the punches and kicks that Ronda couldn't, which I do think that is the thing. I think Misha has a better chin and toughness than mm-hmm. Ronda. She can like smother Holly Holm late in the fight and wrestle her and beat her up on the ground. Yeah, have you ever seen Holly Holm grapple? She can't grapple. I mean, she trains at Jackson's MMA. She knows basic grappling, but she's a kickboxer. True. So, and true. do you think? Well, because I think if if the fight stayed on their feet, that Holly would win. Mm. But if Misha got her on the ground, do you think that she stands a chance? Well, what does stand a chance mean? I, do like, you think? She... I, I'm asking you. Do you think Misha stands a chance to submit her? Absolutely. I yeah. think I think Holly only stands a chance on the ground at surviving. She's mm-hmm. not going to attack off her back. She's not going to submit. She, you know, she might escape and get back to her feet. But if, if, if Misha can find a way to wrestle really well and use ground and pound and maybe, you know, threaten with submissions, she's going to be running the fight. Whereas on her feet, Holly's going to be dictating the fight. Mm. It's a good fight either way. I think it's even, you know, a more interesting matchup than the Ronda fight. Mm. I get really upset. I'll say this as someone. That's what we, but hold on. Right after Ronda lost, we went on the podcast and talked about it, right? Mm. And you were like, this is so good for the whole division. I was like, this is good for Misha Tate. You remember? Like, this is the best thing that could have happened for her. Misha was at a strip club being like, I'm the person that should get this fight. And Dana is like, (laughs) it was. It was a strip club. She was at a gentleman's nightclub watching the Holly Home fight and she was getting paid to be there. Like, do you, Misha? You fucking slay, queen. Well, it was was in Vegas. So it's. Yeah, they have all sorts of weird after parties or viewing parties. It was a viewing party at a gentleman's club, which I don't think is out of out of character for no, Vegas. No. Nor does I nor do I think that that reflects poorly on Misha. It's just a, a place to host a night. Yeah, Who cares? For sure, for sure. Um but I yes, you did say that. But I also want to say that I get extremely frustrated watching fights when I feel like 
the person that is losing doesn't quite have a plan of how they want to win. Like I was getting frustrated in the Ronda Rousey fight because against Holly Holm, because Holly was, you know, just in and out, out, in and out, out, just attacking her with punches. And Rhonda needed to get her ass on the fucking ground, but it didn't look like she 100% had a goal. I think that's a bad example, but there are so well, many she fights. she was rocked so early. True. It was more of just survival. But there are so her, many like... fights where someone's losing and you're like, dude, what's your fucking plan? Why yeah. do you not have a plan? I think that... It's poor preparation. Yeah, when yeah. Misha fights Holly, her plan will be from beginning to end, because you know how Misha fights, mm-hmm. her plan will be... To get her on the ground. Make her uncomfortable. And grapple her to death. Get her in a fucking standing choke. Wrap her little legs around Holly Holm and squeeze her like a python. Yeah. And I think that that is a good plan because you're not going to go in there and box with her. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Misha's the the one I would, the one female 135er that I would pick against Holly right now because she's, she's so well rounded. She can wrestle like crazy. She can grapple. And she can, you know, stand on her feet and survive. Chris Cyborg, though, is the hero we need. I'm kidding. I mean, it's <laughs> just kidding. like yeah, totally Chris kidding. Cyborg. I just like saying Chris Cyborg. And I love that gif of Bech Gohea. So sorry for not really contributing to the conversation. No, you're contributing. <laughs> I just think Misha's uh, she's she's a good matchup for Holly. Really I agree. I think it's going to be a really good fight. Yeah. I mean, I, I, and I'm I'll, a Holly fan and I'm a Misha fan. If I were so. picking, I, I'm, you know, if I, I put money on the fight, it's going to be on Misha. That's who I pick. Really? In this fight. Oh, yeah. I pick Misha in this fight. Wow. Ghouly. I would not be mad at all if Misha had a title under her. I mean, she deserves one. She, she, yeah, dude. Fuck I mean, it's, but you only deserve a title if you earn one, whatever. But she just deserves a shot. I'm happy she's getting it. I agree. Um. So fights. Who else is fighting that night? On the super fight. I have to look at the card. It, it's not a super fight. Super it was just going to be a really dope it's card. It's a super fight. I'm going to look it up. Yeah, look it up. Um, I'm just. Has Nate been saying anything on Twitter? I like when he periscopes sometimes, and it's just like of nothing. Nick posted a little uh, like meme thing of Connor, and it's a it's a picture of Connor with with the mic, and he's saying, "I don't care about a fucking belt." And then Nate Nate's picture is there, and Nate says, "Well, why do you always carry it around?" And then Connor's just like. <laughs> <laughs> and that happened at the press conference, but Nick um, and Nate in their in their fucking goodness. Instagram trash talk. I love it. I love both of them. Um, They're funny as fuck. Hold on. Super fight. Is it one ninety? Super fight. I'm not sure. One ninety six. Yeah, McGregor Diaz. Um, I wonder what's making that noise. You hear that? The hum? Yeah, I think it might be the computer. You want to just, like, shut it really quick? How do you know it's not a bumblebee? It's probably a bumblebee. Mm-hmm. Oh, I unplugged the headphone. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't that. Oh, you know what it is? What? The lights? It's the lights. The, we got the hue lights in here, and we haven't set them up yet, so they're making that weird fucking noise. Oh, motherfucker. That's what it is. Uh, Ear Latifi is fighting Gian Volante, or... I think that's how you say it. Corey Anderson's fighting Tom Lawler. Tom Lawler, where has he been? Amanda Nunes, Brandon Thatch, Eric Silva. Yeah, it's not a super stacked card. It was really about the main and the co-main. I'm excited. Oh, Jim Miller's casually fighting Diego Sanchez. I like that. Uh, Did you know that Floyd Mayweather, I heard? I didn't read into this at all, but someone at Jiu-Jitsu was talking about that he is building a fight arena, a Floyd Mayweather. Where? Where? Well, in Vegas, and it's supposedly going to be bigger than the MGM, and it's going to house UFC fights as well as boxing. So if you've That's noticed, genius. so if you've noticed in the last couple months, Floyd hasn't been running his mouth about MMA. Uh, I, I mean, it's been pretty apparent because he would do that a lot, and now he's not. Uh, yeah, you can't beat him, join him. Right? There's money in it. Well, I mean, there's no beating of. MMA or boxing. You guys are both winning, but. It's a good business. It's a good business opportunity to just build a fucking official arena out in Vegas instead of having it in these casino spaces. You have the money to do it, so fucking do it. He probably just dropped one of his duffel bags and was like, "All right, guys, just start working on it. Just somebody draw something." (laughs) Maybe a duffel bag and a half. It's bigger than the MGM, so. But he does carry around those duffel bags. That's so weird that he does that. Yeah, it is. He's a stand-up guy. No, he is not. I just remember years ago when I was blogging, I, he tweeted a picture of him. Do you remember like the first generation iPod? Yes. 
Oh, the, the, the wheel, wheel, the physical wheel. Yeah. yeah, and then there was the second generation one that was still had the physical click wheel, but it was just a little bit smaller. There's a picture of him that he had tweeted like that year when that was a thing. Yeah, of it, a diamond necklace shaped like that second generation iPod, just cr- like covered in diamonds, and it was really funny. And I blogged about it. it was, oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, that's funny. Wow. Yeah, because I remember, like, my boss was pissed at me. He came downstairs. He was like, where'd you find that? I'm like, on his Twitter. He's like, you follow Floyd Mayweather on Twitter? Oh, fuck like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Living. It was really funny, though. Yeah. I want to find it now because it's, I'm, I'm sure, even funnier in hindsight that you have, like, a outdated technology encrusted in diamonds yeah. around your neck. <laughs> you know? Encrusted diamonds. Yeah, it's just, crazy. You know, just in case you're wondering about covering your Tamagotchi in diamonds. Your Casio calculator watch and diamonds. Yeah. Mm, VHS, VHS and diamonds. Oh, yeah. Yes. But then it wouldn't work. Mm. It's not functional VHS. Sega, Diamond Sega yes. Dreamcast. <laughs> <laughs> Diamond Gay Boy. Game Boy. I just like said Gay Boy. I'm you sorry. You said Gay Boy. Game Boy. Wow. <laughs> Toodaloo, Gay Boys. What's that from? I don't know. What movie is that from? I don't know. The Hangover, I think. Oh, oh. I think that's what it says. <laughs> <laughs> Toodaloo. Ken. Ken Jong, I think. Oh, he's so funny, man. Right? Jong, J-E-O-N-G. I don't know. I'm not sure. Like, you know what you could do? You can get a diamond it, encrusted TV and you put it all on the perimeter, right? You put the diamonds all on the top, all on the bottom, all on the side, and even on the back, but not on the screen because on the screen you're going to be watching Vice Live, <laughs> which is Vice's brand new TV channel with awesome new shows. Like I said, there's a whole lineup of brand new shows for you guys to watch. And if you've ever watched something from Vice, it is like on another level, documentary wise. And, you know, cinematically, just the stories they tell. I watch a lot of Vice. We watch a lot of Vice. Uh, but Viceland is now a TV channel that's going to house all of these new shows. That's and I watched so the show. Exciting. Oh, my God. So, you know, the little mousy guy, Thomas Morton. Mm-hmm. So he hosts a new show called Balls Deep. And in this show, he basically goes. It's it's a very simple concept. He wants to explore different parts of the world and live how those people live. That's awesome. It's very bare bones, you know, but the idea it isn't what makes it special. It's how they execute it. So he goes for this episode. I well, watched. he's the special guy. Oh, he's very funny. Uh, so he goes to this town in Arkansas where they have these tent revivals. Like what? Jesus crazy, like very intense Christian tent revivals. Like, okay. Where they have these, uh, I don't, you know, it's hard to explain, right. but they have these um, ceremonies where I don't really, I don't really know what to say exactly to describe it, but it's, um, it's a very religious thing that they do in these big tents outside. And it's intense because it's not just like a normal uh, church service, but it's okay. like, I think I know what you're talking about. You know about. what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, I forget who was doing it. One of the big, I can't remember, um, televangelists, you know, those people. Yeah. And then they had like a retreat or something and they put them in the big tent and yeah. it's like super hot in there. And they yeah, pray it's crazy for a bunch hot. And then someone's laying on the floor and they're like yelling at him and they're trying yeah. to like do this whole oh, thing. Oh, cool. So that's the first episode? So yeah, that's that. I don't I don't know if it's oh, the first. Down. It's the first one I watched, but that is right. an, it might be the first episode of Balls Deep with Thomas Warren. And basically he that's goes cool. in and he helps out and he's part of it. And this whole time you're like getting his take on everything, which is the, the great thing about him is he's able to not be rude mm-hmm. or judgmental, but he's also able to give you like you know, his straight up opinion of things to the camera and straight to other people's faces yeah. without being a certain way. He's yeah. very like friendly and uh, he does it in a very interesting way. It's, it's incredibly entertaining. Wow. Um, That's so cool. So if you guys are interested in that awesome kind of stuff and they have plenty of other shows, there's a show about stand up comedians. It's a lot of cool, yeah. lo- cool lineup of shows coming up. If on you guys Vice don't Land. watch Vice or know what that is, the, it's incredible. They have so many documentaries. And even if you like, cause we watch them on Xbox video and yeah. HBO go and stuff like that. Yeah, But if you don't have that now, yeah. it's a channel. It's a even TV if, channel. even if the topic of it, like, cause when I force Julian to watch them, sometimes, you know, the topic might not seem interesting to him. So he'll keep moving. I'm like, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't like, matter. Just turn it on yeah. and start watching it. And you will be interested. But that's that's Vice for Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Yeah, they do a really good job of that. So um, check it out, Viceland. Um, it's a new channel, and you that's can, so cool. it actually launches today. Great. So uh, the show I was talking about, Balls Deep, uh, premieres March 2nd at 11 p.m. on Viceland. Uh, also, thanks again to Headspace. We've talked about Headspace, Headspace before. Headspace is basically an app. You can take it on your phone, tablet, computer, and 
it basically, once you plug in some headphones, allows you to meditate wherever you are. And it's guided meditation. So you're not just left to just do it how you think. Uh, they really, really help you. They give you a lot of key tips and how you're supposed to meditate for the best results. Uh, meditation, you know, it's, it's rooted. I always say this. It's rooted in thousands of years of uh, science and also uh, tradition. And it works. It does reduce stress. It does help mm -hmm. you with your relationships. It has a number of amazing benefits. But if you go to headspace.com slash Jenna Julian right now, you can do the take 10 challenge, which means you can meditate 10 days for free, all guided all through the program and see how you like it. Uh, but that whole trial is going to suck you in. You're going to want to do more. Uh, so check that out. Amazing. Headspace is really great. Thank you can you do Headspace. it anytime, guys. Just bring your headphones and your phone and you are set to go. Yeah. If anything, if anything, just use it to relax and slow down the time. Uh, you don't even realize what 10 minutes can do when, you, when you're when you really focusing on meditating like that. Isn't that everybody's goal, help. though, is to, you know, you're only here for so long. Just slow down the time. Just enjoy your time here on Earth. It's a great a way to bit. put it. Yeah. Go to headspace.com slash Jenna Julian to get started. Thanks to our sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. Um, so as you guys are witnessing right now, it's pretty, pretty relaxed off the cuff podcast because we, uh, we figured we'd throw one of these in because they're fun sometimes. Cause they're fun. They're fun all the time. Oh, you're fun. I am fun. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Julian. I'm a fun guy. Um, we, we actually, Jenna had a game idea to play. Well, someone suggested it to me and it made me laugh out loud. Uh, I can't remember. I took a screenshot of it. Um, I will try and find it, but I'm probably not going to. I can't remember if it was on Twitter or Facebook, but someone was like, my husband and I like to play this game where we pick a person and we decide whether or not they're a fruit or a vegetable and like what fruit or vegetable they would be. And she was like, we call it fruit or vegetable. <laughs> she was like, so for example, like if Kermit, Marbles and Peach were a fruit or a vegetable, what would they be and why? I thought it was fucking funny. I think it's funny. I think we should do it. I already, we already have lists of names, so... I want to start with you. Okay. Am I a fruit or vegetable? What do you think? No, no, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to tell me if I'm a fruit or a vegetable. Okay. I want to think of like a... Ooh, okay. I think that you would be a fruit and uh, that you would be a pineapple. Because Ooh. you're really sweet on the inside and you're like strong and hard on the outside, but you also have a fancy hat and and like your hair is really pretty. But uh, you're cool. don't fucking touch me though; you'll get pricked. But you also grow close to the ground because you're a grounded person and you're a nice person. Okay, I think you're a pineapple. I well, I appreciate a that. I also I also like pineapple a lot. It's delicious. It's very delicious. It's really good. What am I? Am I a fruit or a vegetable? Well, that's tough. Hmm. Hmm. Fruit or vegetable? I don't know. I know a peach is. Peach is a fruit. She's a peach. She's a peach. What's marbles? Fruit or vegetable? Uh, vegetable. He is a pepper. A fiery hot pepper. <laughs> right? Oh, he's my little pepper. <laughs> he's little pepper. My little pepito. <laughs> he's so cute. Okay, um, what's Kermit though? Kermit is a tomato because he's a fruit, but he looks like a vegetable. <laughs> I was gonna say that he's like a cucumber or something. He's just like kind of weird. <laughs> so weird. He's just a little nervous to be here. Yeah, you think like, he's a tomato? Well, isn't a tomato a fruit technically? But everyone thinks it's a vegetable. Yeah, yeah so, yeah, so that's avocado. what Kermit is. Yeah. An avocado is too. It's a fruit. Yeah. Well, Kermit's better than an avocado. Uh, Be better avocado. than an avocado. Uh, avocado. You know, that's not a bad uh, slogan to live uh, by. Uh, Be better than Be an avocado. Be better than an avocado. Be better than an avocado. Um, I think you are definitely, um, probably, you know what? I think you're carrots. I'm carrots? I, I think like you're carrots, carrots because carrots grow out of the ground. Like yeah, you're in literally the ground. I'm it, in the ground. Yeah, I know, but you come out of the ground. That's where you grow. You don't grow on trees. You're you're so close to the ground. You are the most grounded person I know. You are very good at like how do I say this? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm all over the place sometimes, but you're like, wait a minute, let's just be grounded for a second. Pointed into the ground. Yeah. What's your sign? I'm a Virgo. Yeah. That oh, has girl, something. what's your sign? Oh. Aries, girl. Oh, 
for mm. those of you that are fans of astrology, you would know that Julian and I don't typically date. Virgos and Aries don't typically romantically link up. But fuck all that shit. I like astrology when it's good for me. <laughs> right? Fuck you, astrology. When it's like, oh, you guys shouldn't date. I'm like, horseshit. This is a bunch of horseshit. Huh. And then when it's like, oh, you guys are destined to be together. I'm like, yeah, I fucking love this shit. Yeah. Man. I'm kidding. But true. You're a, you're an Aries big time. Though. I'm I'm very Aries. He's an air sign. He's all over the place, and I'm an earth sign. I like to, to stay at home and be grounded. Okay, I ground myself. Yeah, I'm grounded. Yeah. Jenny, you grounded. You grounded. Oh, okay. Je- Jenny, you grounded. Um, what do you think oh, I Donald one. Trump is? Nope, I'm not talking about him. I want to know if he's a fruit or a vegetable. He's a a plant. The he's Venus like a- flytrap because he just opens his mouth. So <laughs> That is not a fruit or a vegetable. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Who, what's Ryan Higa? Ooh, okay. I got a good answer for him, I think. You do? I think. Mm. Yeah. I think Ryan would be... <laughs> see, I think Ryan's a cucumber. I think Ryan's, Ryan's a, a butternut cucumber. squash. Why? Because it's shaped like the base of a lamp. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think the point of the game, though, is to just decide whether or not someone's just right more away. fruit-like or vegetable-like. Ryan is more vegetable-like. I think he's a vegetable. He's definitely a vegetable. He's, he's a vegetable. Yeah, he's, like, cool. He's chilling. Ryan's, like, creamed corn. That's not a vegetable. That's There's a vegetable dish. Corn is a vegetable. Creamed corn. Creamed spinach. Collard greens. <laughs> Collard greens are a vegetable. I, I think creamed corn. Ryan's Why? Cream. Well, because he's like a vegetable, right? It's like, it's like corn, yeah, but it's cream corn, so it's like, all right, this is fun. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Okay, who else you got? Well, now it's your t- oh, because Donald Trump. Do I have to go back to Donald Trump? I already did. Yeah, fruit or vegetable? He's not a Venus flytrap. Okay, he's a fruit, but like, I say he's a tomato. No, he's an avocado. He's a tomato. Kermit's a tomato. Kermit's not a tome- tomato. He's a cucumber. Donald Trump. He's, I don't know. He's a, he's a. He's a tomato. I mean, if anything, just look at his face. He's just red. That's true. All right, he's a tomato. He's kind of orange. He could be a, a pumpkin. No, pumpkins are way cooler than him. Okay. Who's, all right, what's Kanye? Ooh, okay. Um, let me think about it. We'll just decide fruit or vegetable. Is he a fruit or a vegetable? Definitely a vegetable. I feel like he's a fruit. Like he's a strong flavored fruit. Or he's at least like a like a really strongly flavored vegetable. He's a pickle. An onion? He's a pickle. A pickle is not a vegetable. He took, That's a cucumber. No. Okay. He took a, he was a he was a cucumber. Yeah. And he was like in this vinegar for mm-hmm. so long. Okay, so do you want to play the game what food are people? No, no, no. We're doing fruit or vegetable. A pickle's not a vegetable. A pickle is a vegetable. It's a modified vegetable. That's a now. So when you eat a pickle, a what are you eating? Now is that a, a carb? Food. Is that is that like a piece of meat? Now it's, it's a food. All right, fine. Fruit or vegetable only. You don't get to do modified. Well, fine. You can say if they're a fruit or a vegetable, then say what dish you think they are. I think he's in. All right, an onion's a good one because he's an intense vegetable. He's an intense vegetable. Yeah. yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For sure. All right. What do you got? Hillary Clinton. Mm, I got banana. <laughs> I say fruit too. I yeah. was gonna say like papaya. Yeah, but, but those are similar. Yeah, but you're like it's got that flavor. You're where you're like I'm not 100 percent sure if I like this. Yeah, maybe. like it's it's a fruit. You should it's a be strange like, texture. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you go, and it's got benefits to it. La, like la, it's la, got la, like la. potassium and stuff, but it doesn't yeah. taste like it smells fruity and okay, happy. but it doesn't taste as good as you want it to. Yeah, she's yeah, a fruit. She's, she's a fruit. fruit. She's a fruit. For sure. For sure. That was a good one. Jeff mm. Probst. Ooh, Probst McGubbs. <laughs> Probst McGubbs. <laughs> Julian wins immunity. Speaking of which, <laughs> if we could get if we could get a Survivor contestant on the show, would you guys be oh, interested yeah. in that? Because we, we can absolutely look into oh that. Oh, my God. Um, we actually have a couple of ways to do it with a couple of different people. So leave in the comments if you'd like that if you want that because we will reach out to those people and pound we'll, them we'll make it happen um i'm obsessed with cochran i would die if he's one of the possibilities because he's die. hit me up before i, would I actually die. dropped by his periscope one time and i stalker. commented and he noticed me stalker and apparently he knows who we are so 
I mean, I have some favorites off of Survivor, like, all time that I stock nonstop anyway, so. I should stock them, too. I don't follow any of them. I should oh, look them I up. Stalk I stock everybody. I stock Cochran, but no one else. I need to look up. Uh, I stock Spencer. I stock the fuck out of Spencer. You love Spencer. I do. Because he reminds guy. me of my brother. He's very, he's very much like your brother, yeah. And um, who else? Who was that? What's his face on the, the last season with the glasses? I love him. I love this season on the glasses. What's his name? Kai? Oh, yeah. Little Asian dude. He's, he's hilarious. He's awesome. Um, he's Vietnamese. Vietnamese. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, you're right. He's He grew up in Vietnam. Yeah. Right? I can't 100% remember. Or he lived in Vietnam Whatever. at some point. Anyways, fruit or vegetable? Fruit or vegetable. Jeff Probst. He's definitely a vegetable. Come on. Mm. Dude, he is so even keeled. Okay. I would say that Jeff Probst is like a, like a parsnip. It's like a white carrot sort of thing. Hmm. It's a parsnip. You know what I think Jeff, Jeff Probst is? I think he's jicama. Jicama. That's a good one. Is jicama a vegetable? Oh, you know, it might be a fruit. I don't know what it is. You know what? If it's a fruit, that's even better because it's like the most It's the most even-keeled fruit and, there is. And when you cut it, it goes, ooh, oh, yeah, 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 Like Survivor? Yeah, even though Jeff Probst doesn't make that noise. Yeah. Jeff Probst is amazing yeah, because he has... He has this arsenal of like 15 different phrases that he's repeated for years and yeah. he never ever says them even Incredible. close to differently. Like it's, I, it blows my mind how good he is at that. Yeah, he is really good. Even I mean, live, he's fantastic. And yeah. And like when I went, I went to school skill. for, for that kind of thing. Like people who were in my major wanted to be TV hosts. They wanted to be TV reporters and you had to learn how to do that. You had to say the same thing the same way every time. Mm -hmm. And it's fucking hard and it's, it's really weird hard. and it, everything, there's always different factors. And to think about the extremities. Wow. That was the wrong word to think about the extreme <laughs> conditions, not the arms and legs uh, of, of being on survivor and hosting all the time and still <sighs> performing and doing that, right? being that host. It's crazy. It's insane. So hick them up. Mm. And when you cut it, it also goes. We, you just said that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, you were, we were here three seconds ago. <laughs> Bring me your torch. You dip it in the fire. Get fire. Fire represents your life. Hick them up. That represents your life. <laughs> <laughs> what if they handed out pieces of hick them up? All right. You ready? On the count of three, you have to start. At just say a famous Jeff Probes thing until you can't anymore. And I'll we'll take turns. Ready? Go. Julian wins immunity. Uh, good night. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good one. <laughs> Got nothing for you. Come on in, guys. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. No. No. Oh, come on. Don't do this. Uh, bring me your torch. Oh, uh, it's good. Flint in the form of fire. Ooh. Want to know what you're playing for? <laughs> Is that worth playing for? <laughs> shit. That was our next one. <laughs> shit. 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 Fuck. Oh God! Um, let me think real quick. It is time to vote. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at the new tribe. Wow! Drop your buffs. Drop your <laughs> <laughs> wins reward. Oh shit! That's a good one. Um, welcome to the survivor auction. <laughs> All right, I give up. You won. <laughs> no, you definitely won. I was taking too much time. That was a fun game. Yeah. Jeff good. Probst quotes game. I feel like we're missing like a really important one that I can't think of. Are we? It's great shit. Uh, Tribe is spoken. Tribe is spoken. How about that one, Jenna? Way to go. That one's good. Damn. That one's good. Good stuff. Yeah. But yeah, he really does say the same stuff. Yeah, yeah he's it's... he's great. He's he's pretty legend. Okay. Anyways, back to fruit or vegetable. Anyway, back to right, do you want to do a couple more? Yeah. Let's do a couple more. Um, okay, hold on. Oh. Okay. Wait, is it my turn? Yeah, go ahead. Guy Fieri. Oh, okay. Um Guy Fieri. I mean, a buffalo wing is not a fruit or vegetable, so we can't pick that. Mm. A ghost pepper? Ghost pepper. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Because he's just like way too hot for anybody to eat. What what is um What's the closest thing to cotton that's edible? Hmm. That's a fruit or a vegetable? Yeah, I guess. I was just thinking what what you make napkins out of. That's Guy Fieri because he uses know. napkins all the time because he's filthy. Hmm. Oh, okay. So he's a tree. No, 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 no. He's an acorn. He's a dragon fruit because that's what he looks like. Oh, okay. Right? Fair enough. The spiked 
Pineapple. Frosted tips. Oh, now I'm the same as Guy Fieri. <laughs> this is a fun podcast. Oh my god. Bye. I'm sorry, I'm done. So Okay, what about let me think. Someone doesn't have their list. I, I don't want to open them up on my phone, but I wrote a bunch of them. What about uh, Barack Obama? Ooh. What's he? Huh. I'd say he's celery. Ooh, he's tall. Celery's tall. And he's chill, and he's got a good little crunch. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with that. That's perfect. Right? It's yeah, he's got, he's got a good little crunch. Ooh, I know what Michelle Obama is. What? A sweet potato. Yeah. With good arms. Remember that vine of her being like a sweet potato? No. Oh, I guess I missed the joke then. And Rick Ross's pears. Pears. Now it's just, this whole podcast is just turned into a vine, apparently. Uh, what, what's Jaden Smith? Mm, I like Jaden Smith. I think he's neither Unpopular a fruit opinion, or a vegetable puffin. because neither like of those Jaden things Smith. exist. Exactly. He is neither a fruit nor a vegetable. Because <laughs> neither things exist in his There world. you go. What's Shia LaBeouf? Oh, okay. That's good. He is, um, fuck. Shia LaBeouf is a painting of a vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> no, Shia LaBeouf is a vegetable painting another vegetable <laughs> in an elevator. <laughs> Shia LaBeouf is a ukulele playing a vegetable painting another vegetable inside a of a picture of a fruit. That's made out in a of a hole. vegetable. <laughs> In an elevator, Edible and he's just riding it up and down. <sighs> when he did that, it reminded me of uh, when I lived in a dorm in school. I only lived in a dorm for one year, but there were 11 floors. Mm. And, like, you know, Friday and Saturday nights, like, we never did anything for the most part because we had the 24-hour, like, no drugs or uh, not that we did fucking drugs. Drugs. But no no drinking is what uh, I mean to say. Like, but you, you could can't do drink drugs. within 24 or 48 hours of a practice or a game, yeah. which means, like, never. Yeah. So Friday nights, Saturday nights, we would stay in so you'd see all the kids in the dorm yeah, just yeah. fucking stupid and shit. And there was this one kid in our dorm building. Building, which was 11 fucking floors and he would sit in the elevator with his guitar and play songs so as like people came in and out of the elevator he would just be in there playing fucking dave matthews and shit wow. and i'm like dude can you get the fuck out of the elevator yeah, that's, those are the kids i just hated in yeah college. and then there'd be like a bunch of people in there sitting with him and i'm like why can't you go to your room like why do you need to be in the elevator why horrible but Shia's was different, I guess. Yeah. Because he wasn't just doing shitty Dave Matthews band covers in the elevator. Yeah, he was just meeting people. Apparently he was nice. I know you're trying to make friends, bro, but like, you know, you don't have to make friends. It was posted on Reddit that someone was like, I met Shia in an elevator. And then in the comments, it was like, what was Shia doing in an elevator? And uh, they explained it. And he was like, yeah, he was a really nice guy. And sometimes people portray people in the media to be weirder than they are. And then someone was like, yeah, he's just a totally normal guy riding an elevator for 24 (laughs) hours. (laughs) Mm, Um, That's funny. Well, if you want to wrap it up, we can wrap it up. But I wanted to say something really quick. Really exciting news. As of right now, guys, we have a website. We do? Yay! It's up? JennaJulianPodcast.com. It's, it's in live. It is live. Oh, uh, my God. Oh, we my did a, God. Oh, my God. Oh, my it's God. It's been live since Friday. We did a soft launch on Friday. And now uh, you guys can go to JennaJulianPodcast.com, catch all the episodes in one place, oh my catch God. our Twitter, our Instagram feed. Uh, there's a, st- a merch store on there with all the stuff we've been teasing. Uh, and we are currently working, like, always on the website. We're going to constantly improve it, make things uh, have better about it. If you guys have suggestions about the website, if you go to it, let us know on Twitter at Jenna Julian Pod. Uh, we're getting help on Twitter now. Debbie Machine is helping us with that Twitter account. So if you want to tweet it, uh, that account, you'll either get one of us or Debbie. Or either Debbie way, Machine. yeah, either way, check out the, uh, the podcast website. That's Jenna Julian Podcast. That's so cool. Dot com. And let us know what you think. Hopefully, you enjoy it yeah uh, we do want to make it like what you guys want we want to make it so what you want you so if there's a feature that we don't yeah. have constructive feedback is always welcome yeah because we want to make it the best we can um so check that out guys and thank you again for joining us another week of the yeah, podcast i like fun relaxed podcasts. this was a fun one Shout sometimes out. we get too serious yeah you no uh, you're right sometimes we do we do and it's good to chill out for a little shake things up 
It's good to chill out for a little bit. If you're not chilling out in podcasting, you can be chilling out and meditating guided on headspace.com slash Jenna Julian. That's headspace.com slash Jenna Julian. Go check it out. Get the app and see what you've been missing, guys. Stress-free life. It's amazing. It really does make a difference. Thank you, Headspace, for sponsoring our podcast. And Viceland, the new TV channel from Vice with all new original shows launching today. Uh, check it out, guys. Right after you go to our website. Just it's, go to Viceland. Seriously, go to Viceland. <laughs> and it's then a go channel. to Headspace and download that. And yeah. we'll, we'll just have the best day. And uh, thanks again, Viceland and Vice, for sponsoring the podcast. Uh, we really think you guys are going to enjoy some of those programs because uh, Vice really, really makes quality stuff. Yeah. Uh, Very thought-provoking. If you like this podcast, you would like that a lot more. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, as someone who's who's getting so interested in filmmaking, I find all of their projects all their documentaries all their series so interesting and so fulfilling because they do they do such cool like obviously it's substantial work but it's visually interesting cool true you know it's 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 awesome um anyway thanks guys for hanging out we will catch you next week dink dink catch you next week dink fam on another podcast catch you tonight on the twitch stream yeah and uh have a great week bye dink fam bye bye